All right, let's talk about one of the most cathartic JJK chapters ever, I guess. I mean, honestly. So this is going to be my chapter 257 review. If you're not caught up, spoiler warning. All right, so there's so many things I want to talk about and touch on, but we got to start with the translation wars. And if you've been following my channel, you're already going to know what this is about. I've made a few videos on it, but for anybody that missed it, this chapter was just an absolute clown show when it came to translations. Because during Leaks Night, we were first told that Yuji and Sukuna were twins. But like an hour and a half later, it came out that that was an error. And in fact, Sukuna and Yuji's father are the twins, Jin Itadori. Um, we're going to talk more about that later, don't worry. But then that wasn't it, because the next day, there was a new debate about another translation in the chapter. So not related to the twin thing, but there was this huge back and forth on what exactly Sukuna was saying about Yuji and being the vessel for his fingers. Well, again, after a lot of heated back and forth, I think the community has come to a general consensus now, mostly thanks to Lightning, who is a godsend. But what Sukuna was saying was that Yuji was born with one of his fingers sealed within him. So now with the translation debacle out of the way, not only did we have those insane lore reveals, but we had the most electric sequence in the manga, or at least up there with them, with Yuji's eight black flash streak, which we got that kind of little cool piece of foreshadowing from Gege in the corner there. Yuji unleashed seven back-to-back -back black flashes this chapter, plus the one from the previous chapter makes a absolute insanity. I had the biggest grin on my face as I was reading this chapter, as I know you guys did too. Our boy finally had his MC moment, and what just made this so much sweeter is that Yuji did not say shit when he was doing this. He was just talking with those hands, man. And Sukuna started to freak out. And that was just so cathartic seeing him like upset and realizing that Yuji was climbing up to his level. It was just so good. And it's been what we've waited for for so long. And the peak didn't even stop there because in addition to the eight black flashes, Yuji also used Sukuna's curse technique for the first time shrine and his manifested slashes with some scissors as opposed to the way we see Sukuna do it and this is even mentioned in the chapter that the, even though they have the same curse technique they're going to vary slightly because of era and just the person using it and I love this this is something I've talked about in previous videos uh, you know it's come up before like people with the same curse technique using it in different ways or having different domain expansions. And I think that's beautiful because there's so much like philosophy in JJK, how the world is kind of shaped by your perception of it. Uh, famously, you know, this was a conversation between Kenjaku and Mahito in the Shibuya train station where, you know, Mahito thought it was all about the soul because his technique is about the soul, whereas Kenjaku thought it's all about the body because his technique is about the body. But yeah, man, the eugenesance is here and we've got front row seats. Are you guys going to allow that eugenesance? I thought, you know, let me know if, if we're going to allow it. But, you know, if you sold your Yuji stocks early, I feel sorry for you because the MC has arrived. According to the editor's note, surpassed the king. I don't know about that. That might need to calm down a little bit, but he's here, no doubt, and he is clowning Sukuna. But the important thing we got to remember here is that Sukuna is like at 3%, basically, right? I mean, not literally, but the man is missing like half of his limbs, if not more, doesn't have his domain, doesn't have this, that, and the other. And he just took eight black flashes to the dome, basically. So he's not looking good. But I don't think we're in the clear. In fact, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. Okay, okay, one more glaze moment real quick. Just Yuji being able to tank everything Sukuna was throwing at him, just walking through those slashes was so good, man. And for anybody that's wondering, like, how Yuji was able to do that, on top of being on a roll and hitting those black flashes, I think Sukuna's slashes just aren't as effective against Yuji because, as we learned from Gojo, when he hollow purpled the whole city, it hurt Gojo less than it hurt Sukuna because it was his own cursed energy. So similarly, you know, Yuji is soaked in Sukuna's cursed energy and he has his technique. So I think that technique is going to be more weakened against him similarly though if yuji you know uses shrine on sukuna it probably won't be as effective as if he used it on other people which is another reason it's great that he's just going in for the black flashes they're not only more satisfying but they're definitely more powerful anyways let's cycle back to what even enabled all of this in the first place this big reveal that jin itadori is sukuna's twin brother the reincarnation of sukuna's twin brother now this twin theory is something i've yapped about in the past 
podcast at length, so I don't just want to like regurgitate all of that. But if you're looking for an explanation on like how they're twins and how that explains why Sukuna is the way he is, I'll try to remember to link that down below if you're on YouTube. But we know that basically Sukuna ate his brother in the womb. And this is something that can happen in, you know, real life. Not like literally, you know, you open your mouth and eat because again, depending on what stage of birth they were at, that's like not what the baby would have done. It would have been more so like stealing all the nutrients from the baby. And that is something that can happen with twins. Um, so regardless of exactly how it happened, that's what happened. And Sukuna, you know, in this similar situation of twins, just like Maki and Mai, where they're viewed as one person by the universe, gets a buff when the other one passes away. They can like realize their true potential. But the unique situation here is that they were either conjoined twins, which I don't think they have to be, but that would make a lot of sense. Um, but even if they weren't, the fact that he consumed his brother and they were twins with the same soul, Sukuna might have gotten both versions of that power up. So like heavenly restricted plus a curse technique powered up, which would explain how he's keeping up with Maki and dancing off of the air just like she is, even though he has a curse technique. In any case, this explains why he has four eyes, four arms, two mouths, and is just built different in general, right? He is a twin that has the boost of having you know, his other twin kicked the bucket. The really interesting question here is why Jin Itadori? Why did the soul reincarnate here? I put out a video earlier this week, check it out, where I thought maybe Kenjaku has been manipulating the Itadori bloodline for centuries for all we know. Like maybe he had a hand in Jin being born as well. Perhaps he was trying to make this soul reincarnate in the Itadori bloodline to then ultimately give birth to Yuji. Is that definitely what happened? I don't know, but it would make sense. I also wonder if this soul bouncing around has something to do with fate, similar to how the six eyes can re-manifest. Maybe this Sukuna twin soul was going to continually re-manifest until it found its destiny. I don't know, I might make another video kind of unpacking some of this because I think there's something here. The same way we know that six eyes, star plasma vessels, and Tengen are connected by fate, maybe Sukuna is somewhat in here as well. And don't really have the information to kind of put behind this yet to know if it's concrete or not, but I wonder if even Tengen could be related to Sukuna. Like, could Tengen even be Sukuna's mother? Which would explain that weird panel where Kenjaku, like, cites the resemblance between this version of Tengen and true form Sukuna. Um, we know that, you know, Sukuna referenced his mother, and I don't know. It's just, it's something that could add up, but I don't know if there's anything there yet. But between fate and the resemblance and the weird connection between Sukuna, Tengen, and Kenjaku... Maybe there's something there, which would also explain like why Tengen didn't give all the information that she could have. And then, of course, we also got the Yuji was born with a finger sealed inside of him news. Now, um, I talked about this at length in a previous video yesterday or the day before, talking about like what Yuji having a finger inside of him from the start means, what we can learn from that. So check that out. I don't want to just go over it all again here, especially because we don't know for sure what this means. We need more context. Um, I believe Lightning's translation, I'm not saying that's wrong, but we still just don't have enough information on exactly what that means. Like, when was the finger unsealed? Did Sukuna take it with him when he went to Megami? Yada, yada, yada. The most interesting thing here, though, is how much Sukuna knew. What was he and Kenjaku's binding vow, you know? Clearly, Sukuna at some point realized that Yuji had this finger in him, but did he know it from the start and just, you know, had no reason to explain that to anybody? Or did he find out at some point? Um, because we know that ultimately, Kenjaku knew Sukuna wouldn't stay in Yuji because Kenjaku needed Sukuna to fulfill his part of the binding vow once he was out and in Megami able to act freely. So just what was their plan and how much did Sukuna know? Man, what a chapter. There was just so much, right? And I actually have a ton of questions from you guys about this chapter, but as I'm already nearing running out of time, I'm gonna have to make a separate video just answering questions. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. We'll yap about more specific things there. Uh, but yeah, just what a chapter, man. There was so much. So please hit me in the comments with all of your thoughts and theories on this. I would love to hear them. Um, and also, I'm sorry for like referencing four of my own videos in this video instead of just re-explaining it, but I just didn't want to waste too much time going over old information. So again, I will link some relevant videos down below if you're looking for a more in-depth explanation on some of the things I touched on here. Um, but yeah, again, please hit me in the comments. Uh, thank God it's not a break week, man. But as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.